Hello everyone, my name is Skylar and welcome to a several part series on how to use the ZZ Convert and ZZ Play as tools that were made for Blender. Um, this tutorial is going to be primarily aimed at people who just can't stand Blender and have already made a model that they want imported into Ocarina of Time. And um, yeah, uh, this program can be a pain in the ass, so I, I tried, I'm trying to do what I can to make it easier on everyone, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to cover is on how to import the plugins into Blender itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to this little symbol here, and we're going to click it and go to uh, User Preferences. I noticed that in my the first part of this tutorial, my overlay was in the way, so I'm just going to go over that one more time real quick. To import your plugins, you go to User Preferences, you, you go to Add-ons, Install from Add-on File, Tutorial, you go to Tools, Plugins, and then this is where your your add-ons will be, so you click all three of those, but you will be clicking the zip folders, you won't be unzipping them. Alright, and then you go to input, put on left, and go to select with left click, that'll make things easier on you. And I something I did forget to mention is you go to add-ons, go to user, and you have to actually select the box for the uh, all of those plugins. So we're going to save those user settings and then we will go back to what we were doing. So we'll go back to 3D view here. All right. And for the same thing is... All right, so here we have our scene. We have several different modes when it comes to geometry. We have object mode, which is just to select it. We have edit mode, which allows you to edit your model. And while we're in edit mode, we have these little symbols right here, which is the vertice, edge, and face tools. Then we have sculpt mode, vertex paint, and these other things. You're not going to have to worry about these for this kind of project in particular, so we'll go back to object mode. Now, right now he's, he seems to be in a t-post position but that's not the actual default position he's got to be in in the game he is in a different folded up kind of position so to see what he looks like you go and you click the skeleton and you and it should be in pose mode automatically if not click this go to pose mode we go over here there should be a little uh, settings bar here you're gonna want to click the one that looks like a little man and then click rest position this is the default position link will be in in game this is what you're going to have to get your model to look like to make it work in game. So we're going to go back to pose position. We're going to make to make this easier to rig we, uh, for our new link model. We are going to go to object mode. We're going to click this link, go over to this little settings bar and click the wrench, and then apply the modifier that is here. What that does is that makes it so Link's body is no longer folded, like the skeleton is, because it is no longer applying the bones transformations. Next, what you're going to do is you want to go to your bones, click the bones again, go back into pose mode, click this little section next to it that says pose, go to apply, apply pose as rest pose. Now if we go back over here to where this little man is, um, and when we click rest position again, it is in its T-pose. Alright, so there is how we're going to start off with our file. Well, now before we import it, I would like to go over any controls that I can, basic controls on how to use Blender. If you have been following, I have a control set up so that you can see everything that I'm clicking that is relevant to this uh, program and everything you're going to need. So to move around your scene, uh, you, the scroll wheel is obviously for zoom in, zoom out like it is for default. Now if you want to rotate around, you're going to want to middle click your mouse and that allows you to 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 rotate around uh, your object here. Now if you want to pan around you click shift and middle click and that allows you to move left and right instead of around your, your guy here. All right. Next we're going to go over how you move scale and rotate. So you click your model here just we're, um, we're not going to leave it like this. We're, I'm just doing this uh, to teach you how to move things around. So uh, you're going to click G to move just to, to move things around, you click 
S to scale and you click um, R to rotate. All right, simple enough, right? Now, if you want to move about a certain axis, I should have these controls listed in the bottom right corner of the screen just in case you don't want to hear me repeat myself, which I probably will anyway, I'm sorry. Um, for G, you click G again for move. Say you want to move it only on one axis, so we're going to move it along the X axis. So you click X on your keyboard. Now that just moves him up and down, okay? Now if you want to move him left to right, I think that it is uh, on the Y axis. So we're going to click G again, then click Y. So yeah, that's left and right. And then we'll click G again, and then we'll move it on the Z axis, which will be up and down. Now this is something we're going to be using a lot when we come to posing our model. You can also scale along the, uh, one axis the same way as that. Something to note is that you can also switch between these if you need to. And if you need, want to unlock it, you just click the key again. Alright, so now that we have the basics there covered, um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to import our new model. If you didn't see me import the model, it should be self-explanatory. Import OBJ, you'll go to your tutorial folder, uh, uh, textures, and then Majora's Max Angle Triangle. So, now that we have him here, he should be automatically aligned, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you need to align it, I just uh, all those things that I just told you should help you do that. So we're going to hide the normal link model here so that we can take a quick look at this. So we'll click this link, we'll click H to hide him. And then we'll look at this triangle. This triangle right here is a placeholder for the sheath. And if you do not rig the sheath, it will mess up the geometry. Like his torso will be like flipped upside down, left, right, and sideways, all right? And then the, something else you're going to have to rig just so that things align correctly will be the collar. And I will show how I do that when I, especially on models that don't have a collar, um, in the next part to this tutorial. Now, we will also be going over how to fix these face textures and how to make the textures change color when you get them in game so he doesn't just have a white tunic. Now before we go here I'm going to teach you how to unhide that model because I so this is something I had trouble with because I'm dumb. Alright so say we have his model uh, selected. People will say you press Alt H to get your model back so it's, okay it worked. But if you have another model selected it usually does not work. But you have to be in object mode for the to unhide your uh, other model. So Alt H will unhide that. For now, we are going to keep this just for reference to be able to re reference your wind rigging. I personally will not be showing the reference inside of this rig in the tutorial because I pretty much memorized how it, his model is rigged, and so you can just follow along to that, and you shouldn't have any problems. So we're going to hide that. We're going to save this. And as I said, we're going to go over all that stuff in part two, so I will see you then.